go anywhere. They stay in America. We get the sardines. We get the roe. That's all. We hold the lumber. We don't ship lumber to a, a nation that uh, hates us. And we don't let Saudi Arabians buy our farmland. Now, is that liberal or conservative of me? Let's start with a simple one. We're trying to define what a liberal is, what a conservative is, right? I would not permit the sale of farmland to a foreign entity. Does that make me a liberal or a conservative, right-winger or a left-winger? No, it makes me a nationalist, which all of a sudden is being picked up by everyone. Oh, they're not, they're not conservatives, they're nationalists. Two books now I've talked about form a nationalist party. Now suddenly it's filtering out from the radio, the, the ether world of the radio world. Nationalism, like they discovered the word. They themselves coined the phrase. I'm a nationalist, and that's why I support Trump. It's not because I like uh, his suit or his shoes, or I think his wife is good looking. It's because he's as close to a nationalist as we've had in the last 50 years. That's why. America first. Now, his motto is, make America great again. I would change that to uh, make America again. Back in a minute. Operator surprised me with a song that lifted my spirits. They don't really need any lifting. I'm feeling good, but let's go to the callers. That's all. Brian on WJR in Detroit, Michigan. Brian, what's on your mind, Brian? Well, uh, Mike, I've worked with a lot of Muslims over the years in the automotive industry, and one thing I picked up on is that for them, the availability of sin is so easy here in America. I think it just blows their mind. And I think that's what causes some of these guys to want to blow themselves up because they can go out and commit all kinds of crazy sins against their religion. And then the guilt, you know, is afterwards, the guilt must get to them where they can get some radical imam telling them, hey, the only way that you're going to be able to get to heaven now is to blow yourself up. Okay, that's an interesting, that's an interesting statement you just made. So let me absorb it for a minute because it's new. And nobody writes my script for me and tells me what to say. So my gut reaction is the moral bankruptcy of America is causing terrorism, so we're, we're responsible for them? Not so much. <laughs> I mean, think about what you just said. You're blaming the victim of suicide bombing. You're saying they caused it because we're such a degenerate society. I, I wouldn't agree with that. No one's forcing them to watch pornography or go to a bar at night with their with their uh, a hidden picture hiding and go have a drink somewhere or buy a bottle of booze and drink it in a car or whatever they may be doing or go to a prostitute. No one is forcing them to do that. They're doing it. Oh yeah, but the guilt afterwards. You know how it is when you do something wrong. You know your guilt. I never do. I never do anything wrong. I'm different than every other man on earth. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I never do anything wrong. <laughs> it's a question of when I do anything right lately, <laughs> truthfully. Now, I think the moral collapse of America could be beneficial, by the way, for the, for the Muslim world. I think maybe the only thing that could save us from suicide bombing. And that's why I not so jestingly said many years ago that my idea is not such a crackpot idea. Drop millions of bottles of airplane booze in plastic bottles over ISIS strongholds with copies of porn magazines and uh, in the training camps in little packages. You know, I, I think that if the guys swigged the bottle of booze and looked at those magazines, they may throw down their Kalashnikov and stop killing. You know, in that sense, it's like make love, not war. Maybe the 60s would do them a lot of good. I mean, what are they killing for? They think they're going to go to heaven? I, I can't even understand this. They kill innocent Muslims, innocent Christians, innocent Yazidis, innocent Americans, innocent, innocent Germans. For what reason? They go to heaven for killing? Now, what kind of sick religion teaches that? What kind of demented sick religion teaches that? You, not do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, but kill others, and then Allah will love you. What kind of sickness is this? How can a world tolerate the importation of such a diseased mentality into a nation? How could you not ban that, which goes right to why Trump's going to win? He's the only one who's actually raised the issue. Stop all Muslim immigration until we can figure this thing out. 
That's a big statement until we can figure this thing out. What does he mean by this thing? Well, let's see. Which ones of them are reading that kind of garbage that they should kill an infidel because of moral uh, issues? We don't want them. Throw them out. Which imams in America are preaching it? Have the FBI investigate and throw them out of the country and throw the lawyers from NYU out with them. When the NYU or Columbia law clinic lawyers get a hold of the case, throw them out with them. And tell him, thank you very much, Marvin. I'll tell you what, we're giving you a one-way ticket to the same country he's going to. We'll have lots of time sitting in a tent talking to uh, Akbar uh, as you build his defense. That's all. Have a nice time over there, Marvin. You'll see what human rights you find in his country. Okay, it's just a, th it's just a thought. We all think these things. Chris on WABC. What's on your mind, Chris? Line five is Chris. From New York City. Hi, Chris. Did the storm hit yet? Hello? Yeah, Chris, are you sitting in a snowstorm yet? No. I apologize. I, I wanted to ask your definition of Again? bulls. And I preface that oh. by saying um, I heard your conversation with the man earlier who was the former convict who he couldn't convince his father to vote for Trump. Uh, uh, and I, I, okay, so what's your question? Because we got forty seconds before the next break. What is it? The, the, the son, the former convict, said, you know, and, and you mentioned it too that you didn't think. Then you, can you ask me the question of me and not review the caller, please? What's your question? Is, isn't compromise? You're, what are principles, and aren't you compromising them by you know saying that Cruz is not electable and, and Trump is? I'm a pragmatist. I want to win. How's that? Does that work? I don't want Hillary Clinton as president. Does that work for you? Yeah. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Sa Israel, Syria, Trump, Cruz, inflation, deflation, stock market, affirmative action, black lives matter, police lives matter, madness reigns. Obama has smashed the world over his knee. The world is in a, a, a turmoil, and he gets up and gives speeches like the world's perfect. Listen to clip number three of the man who is out of touch with reality. You talk about who's in touch with reality? I talked to a sardine fisherman this morning to gain a grip on reality. Gain. I didn't say I lost it. To gain a better grip on reality, to be more specific. When is the last time Obama spoke to a real person? Listen to clip three. The United States of America right now has the strongest, most durable economy in the world. Ooh, we're doing so much better than other folks are doing. The, the American other economy folks. right now is 10% bigger than it was at its peak before the financial crisis. In Europe, it hasn't gotten back to where it was back in 2007, 2008. Oh, you're doing so great. That's why you can take another vacation now. You earned it. You and Michelle earned it. You're ready for another vacation in Hawaii for around 12 to $20 million. Now listen to clip four to hear about the man who fell to earth. Listen to four. So when you hear people, I won't say who, but when you hear people, Claiming that America's in decline. They don't know what they're talking about. They're, 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 they're peddling fiction during a political season. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's strange to watch people try to outdo each other mm -hmm. in saying how bad things are. When one says our economy is terrible, the next says it's terrible and on fire and covered in bees. And they'll just come up with stuff. <laughs> They're racing to see who can talk down America the most. Now, if you're not working for a living, and you got Air Force One, you got a thousand guards around you, your wife has seventy-two personal servants. You go on any vacation you want for twenty million dollars; doesn't matter. You have uh, disc jockeys come to the White House parties on Wednesday. Dog groomer comes in on Tuesday. Basketball players come in on Thursday. Of course, it's a good world. It's a very good world. And how could you say how could you say things are not good? They've never been better for me and Michelle. What's wrong with you dummies out there? I don't know who he's talking to, but 
you would think that the people he'd be appealing to would be those who would know what the real world is. Richard on WABC. Yeah, fire the dud. Gone. Gone with the wind. We do have trouble with callers today. Either they get on, and I say one thing, and they say another. And they say, sir, what did you just say? And he keeps going. I say it again, they keep going. They keep hitting their their own over and over. No back and forth. No, no, no hearing nothing. Or I hit a button, and it's a blank job. Maybe I should give up calls altogether on the Savage Nation. What if I drop sound and calls? Just have unscreened calls where I don't even know who's on the line. And I don't relate to you. I have no conversation with you at all, like most talk show hosts. I just don't even talk to you. I don't listen to you. I don't respond to you. It may as well be a record. Let's try again. WJR, Rick, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. I was at the uh, audio show where Obama, in those last two clips you had played, were actually what he had spoke as the offense. And it was just, when you hear him spew what he was spewing, and then to be in the audience and to hear the claps and moans and cheers, they were secondary in the, in the sense that they weren't legitimate or realistic. They were just a bunch of clamored and Nazi yahoos that were just agreeing with what he was saying, regardless if the information he was giving us was factual and actual. He was in Detroit um, just giving... All right, got the, I got the point. On and on. So dre my cup. Like a dreidel going around in my head. All right, so he gave a speech to a stooge audience. What else is new about Barack Obama or any other politician? Here, state of California, new taxes coming from Moonbeam. Governor Jerry Brown doubled down on his calls for fiscal prudence as he delivered a state of the state speech today, and he said we need new taxes. We need new taxes to fix roads, highways, and bridges. That's because all roads lead to Rome, and I guess those in the building trades need to be paid back. I can't imagine taxes at some point. Uh, if taxes go up anymore, I'm leaving the state. I'm gonna, I will leave the state at some point. If he hits me with one more percent, I'm going. I'm going to get out of here. Let him go to the illegal aliens for his taxes. You know something I can't put, figure out yet? I've asked rich people that I know, and I'm not poor, but I've asked people with money this question. Over and over again, I said, how is it that the billionaires in Hollywood stay in California with taxes at 15%? 15% state taxes. Think about that. And they don't leave. How is it that they live in Hollywood, they don't leave the state? He said because they don't pay their taxes here. Most of them have no income at all. The money goes to a trust, which is not taxable, and the trust pays them 50000 or 70000 a year above the expenses that they get to run their Hollywood life. And so they pay almost nothing to the state. And then they tell everyone else to pay more taxes. I said, are you kidding me? No, he said, some of them live on yachts. 180 days a year, they're out of the state, so they pay no state income tax. They divide their time between uh, any other state and let's say a yacht somewhere, and if they're here less than 180 days a year, they pay zero state income tax. That's how they can keep an estate, for example, in Beverly Hills. And they pay no taxes. It makes you ask yourself, how do they get away with this? How? How? I don't understand. How. And that's where these liberals are. The richest people in the state are all liberals, psycho liberals, the richest ones, and they pay almost no taxes. And now here's Moonbeam saying that we have to have higher taxes in the state to pay for road work. You hear this? In the state of the state speech, climate change was his thing last year. And then greenhouse gas emission targets beyond 2030. If he would end hot air gas emission from Sacramento, I'd be happier. Water starved Lake Oroville rises to a dramatic 20 feet in six days, and there's no comment from Governor Moonbeam. This, the lake went up 20 feet in six days, and he's still talking about the drought. You hear this? Eight five five four seven two eight two. When is the snowstorm going to hit? Massive winter snowstorm aims for East Coast. I'm sitting here shaking. Did it hit New York? I'm afraid any minute I'm going to hear I'm preempted on the East Coast to talk about shoveling and that uh, the, the Triborough Bridge is closed or the Whitestone Bridge is going to become the Wheatstone Bridge. They're going to change the Whitestone Bridge because it's a racist name. They're changing it to the No Stone Bridge or the Stoners Bridge where you can get uh, drugs from Throgs Neck into Queens through the bridge. 
but we don't want to call it the Whitestone Bridge in New York anymore because it's got racial overtones. 